The opportunity we had with the Rothschild Digital Fellowships was to bring three artists together to here in Stratford to work for six months exploring their craft away from the pressure of a production cycle. So when artists are working with new technologies it's really important to give them the space to explore with that technology and we can't really do that when we're making our shows so the easy way to do that is to take them outside of that process. So I spend all of my time outside this fellowship um, producing work and that's like a treadmill that is quite hard to get off. So I've been trying to sort of hold those thoughts about is it a show, what is the show, back a little bit so that I can just present the research. So it's been a real pleasure to kind of be experimental and to use some of the equipment and skills and expertise here at the RSC. So much has happened but also just gone by so quickly and I'm really looking forward to just share my findings really, I think that's really important. This kind of fellowship is really cool because it protects that space that's that early development where you're really kind of learning the language of another medium. When I, when I you know, first started the, uh, this project, um, I had a strong proposition. You know, I wanted to look at if Minecraft or any kind of video game could, uh, could exist both within a uh, stage setting and also an online setting and maybe a live stream setting. So we have these kind of three audience areas that are really interesting. And I wanted to look at what kind of tools or what kind of roadmap would be needed to make that happen. I've been researching AI in the voice in performance and also just generally in the world um, and gender bias in AI. The problem with not wanting to take instructions from women's voices is it also means that you fundamentally don't really trust what women are saying. I've been looking at testimony from women who have tried to uh, sound an alarm either about assault or about financial collapse or environmental collapse, ecological breakdown, and who haven't been listened to and randomly um, sort of create new sentences from that. So while I've been here, I've created this thing called a Markov chain. It's a very, very basic way of taking all the testimony from all these women and, and putting them into this, this machine and, and not trying to control it, but using it to make almost like synthetic new testimony from everything that's been said before, sort of based on how likely it is that people pair certain words. What the AI allows you to see is that there are patterns in, so if you use those testimonies as data sets, you see repetition. Creative captioning is when captions are included as a design process, um, just like set design, costume design, lighting. So it's something where they're not an add-on or an afterthought. They are included at the start of a creative process for production. It's not just for deaf and hard of hearing audiences, but by being a design element and something that is considered, they can also sort of elevate the performance as a whole. So the outcomes of this process have been for me, um, testing some fundamental ideas about the things I've learned in Minecraft and transfer them into different spaces, whether that's theatre, whether that's on stage, whether that's a Twitch stream, whether that's kind of other uh, game making platforms, that's, that was exciting for me because that, that means that I can break free from kind of uh, what Minecraft is uh, and we can kind of, we can pursue it in lots of different arenas. And the end of the fellowship is not necessarily the end, but just the beginning of this whole exciting project. I definitely will be coming back to the RSC and working on continuing this idea. I've worked towards building a prototype and that's something I initially wanted to achieve. I think the exposure the RSC gives on creative captioning is so big that, you know, they recognise it, but also other theatre companies are seeing, oh, the RSC are looking into this. So I think that's a huge thing in the industry. It's found me really strong connections with people who are working in different art forms. It's found me people who are working in AI, who are specifically looking at gender and the voice. We know this already, but it's been really proved by this project. If you trust artists and give them time and resources, magical things will happen.